Hey everybody, it's 842 here uh, where I'm sitting, so good morning. I wanted to share with you a quick teaching. It's going to be out of 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. Now I need you to listen closely, because this might be the thing that um, that you're missing in your growth in Christ. Starting from verse 2, grace and peace be multiplied to you. In the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Verse 3. Seeing that his divine power has granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness through the true knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. Verse 4. For by these he has granted to us his precious promise, uh, his precious and magnificent promises so that by them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world by lust. So there's so much here to unpack, but I just want to, like I said, this is just a quick teaching. Um, let's take it from verse 4. Um, many of us want to get straight to the partakers of the divine nature part. And, you know, that's understandable, but I want to turn your attention to something here. He says that so that you, uh, for by these, uh, meaning his glory and excellence, he has granted to us his precious and magnificent, magnificent promises so that by them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped. So before you can partake of his divine nature through his glory and excellence, there's something had to have happened. And it's this, having escaped the corruption that is in the world by lust. So the very first thing that needs to happen if you want to grow in your walk is you have to escape corruption. The word corruption there in Greek means decay, when something is decaying. And what causes that decay is lust. And lust is not just talking about sexual lust. Lust is a desire so powerful that it controls your thoughts, your motives, your choices. And lust is never condoned in the Bible. Not in marriage, not in business, not nowhere. Lust is never condoned. It is always condemned. There is a holy desire. Um... But a desire from God does not control you. Lust controls you. And it causes corruption in the world. And if this is still ruling in your life, then it will hinder you from partaking of the divine nature. And let's rewind you know, uh, to verse 2. Where does this all start? Grace and peace be multiplied to you. We, we talk a whole lot about grace, right? Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. So the word knowledge there is not gnosis. Gnosis is when you know something. Like I know that, you know, the ceiling up over here, this is sheetrock, you know. I know that that's a light bulb. I know that, you know, um, I'm sitting on a couch right now in my garage. I know these things. That's the word gnosis. The word here, knowledge, is not gnosis. It's epinosis. Epinosis. Which means a continual knowing. It's, um, it's a constant. You're, you're always... Um, get, you're, you don't stop um, learning about God. You don't stop discovering things about God. It's a continuous knowing. And in that kind of knowledge, His grace and peace are multiplied to us. Now, this doesn't happen automatically. This, this uh, has to, this requires action on your part. And it says, seeing that His divine power has granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness. There, God has supplied everything through his power in every area of our lives in our daily life and in our spiritual walk life and godliness 
through the true knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. So, um, I just wanted to encourage somebody out there that you might not be seeing spiritual movement in your life and you're wondering why. And it's quite possible that the, the, the very first reason is that you don't have a relationship with God. And in a relationship, we're constantly discovering one another. I'm married to my wife. I have a personal relationship with her. And we keep discovering new things about our, our character. Well, I guess um, from my side, discovering things about her character, um, her soul. You know, I, I, I know for a fact, I don't know everything there is to know about her. So every single day, if I choose to, I can discover something new. And that's the word epinosis. Epinosis. It's a continuing, a continuation. A continuation. Uh, a growing knowledge. And again, that's something you have to do. That that's what that's what determines whether you have a relationship or you're just religious. Because the religious person, he's going to know things, but that's where it stops. He just learns some things and that's it. Whereas in a relationship, there's a continuous learning, discovery of God's character, of his, um, of his will, of his values, everything. You know, and that's going to help you. The more you discover God, the more your eyes will be open to the corruption that's in the world by lust. And you will cry out to God and he will help you. And through his power, through his glory and excellence, you will escape this corruption that is in the world. And you will start partaking in the divine nature. I wanted to encourage you, brother or sister, wherever you're watching from, start getting to know the God of the universe, your creator. He loves you so much that his son died for you. God bless you.